How can we get better as private pilots in our chart reading? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and you are listening to the Private Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school, the Ground School Academy. Take a free trial of it at M0Atrial.com. You can check it out there and learn more. You know, we produce four podcasts in whole, the Private Pot Podcast, the Instrument Pot Podcast, the Commercial Pot Podcast, and of course the CFI Certificated Flight Instructor Podcast as well. We're always trying to go above and beyond to deliver more content, and today I wanna to talk to you about chart reading. Now you might be saying, Jason, how on earth are you gonna teach me about chart reading when I'm just listening to you on a podcast? Some of you, I realize, do watch this on uh, on YouTube and Facebook as well, or listen kind of in the background. I don't have any visuals for you. I'm gonna do my best to teach about charts and the importance of charts, all just with the spoken word, if we can do that. So when I'm talking about charts, uh, I guess I use charts as a very general phrase. For example, we could be, today we need to cover VFR sectional charts, terminal area charts as well. I mean, that's kind of like our zoomed in version that we'll call it of a VFR sectional chart. And I, by the way, I realize ForeFlight gives all this data to you here as well. But we also want to talk about what's called our US chart supplement, formerly called the Airport Facilities Directory. But we've since changed the name, still a green book, uh, but now changed to a US chart supplement. That's a somewhat recent change there. Now, to help all of this make better sense, I, I have some homework for you we're gonna kick off with. Please make sure you have downloaded the FAA's Chart Users Guide. You can literally just do a Google search for FAA Chart Users Guide, and that will be like a game changer for you. If there's ever something you don't recognize on a sectional chart or a terminal area chart, you can go to the chart user's guide and you can actually find it in there. So as some homework, what I want you to be doing is utilizing, yeah, if you have paper charts, great, but utilizing digital charts or paper charts and going through your local area and trying to find the symbols that don't just, that just don't make sense to you. In fact, let's spend some time now. Let's talk about the difference between paper versus digital charts and what I prefer. Um, believe it or not, um, we still have some paper sectional charts kind of laying around. Unfortunately, most of the expired ones end up as really cool wrapping paper. Now there's your next uh, entrepreneurial business idea, sectional chart wrapping paper, because there is, uh, don't use them all as wrapping paper. There's coming a day where we are going to completely leave paper when it comes to the sectional charts. It's not yet. It may not be in the next five years, but there is coming a day because we have the power of ForeFlight and I, I use ForeFlight as a broad term for all electronic flight bags. It's just, it's the app I happen to be using. There's by no means a sponsorship arrangement or anything like that. It's just what I happen to use. I pay full price. There isn't even a discount code for, me, for us. Everyone here at ms pays full price for their ForeFlight subscriptions. We don't mind. But there's other great apps out there too, like FlyQ, like Garmin Pilot, like Wing X, that all work and pull that same data. I love it because it updates for me. It downloads the updates for me. It has it. I love that I can pinch in and zoom to really see that. I love the overlays where I'm on a sectional, I zoom in enough and it turns into the TAC chart for me automatically, giving me that higher level of detail. I love using web-based services too, like a skyvector.com. David Graves is the is the owner of skyvector.com. He's become a good friend of mine um, over the years. We use them uh, exclusively in our drone uh, course, Remote Pilot 101. We'll reference skyvector and show the charts over skyvector because it's a great free solution. I realize not everybody has the means to go out and purchase for flight at the tune of 100, 200, I wanna say mine's almost 300 bucks if I remember appropriately uh, for the, the highest version. So I realized using a tool early on, maybe you're listening to this saying, Jason, I'm just an aspiring pilot. You should be utilizing a tool like skyvector.com to start hunting around the chart and spotting the restricted areas, the military operations areas, the warning areas, all that special use airspace, looking at the airport and figuring out frequencies and field elevations and the longest runway length. These are all things you can find out just by a simple quick glance at the chart. So you need to be able to look at the chart and figure those sort of things out. Now, 
let's say we're, we're you're now into your training a little bit. Maybe you're getting ready for the knowledge test. Anybody out there still need to get the monkey off their back and get the knowledge test done? I'll give you probably the best tip, even, even better than the chart user's guide, for helping with the knowledge test. So you've been prepping. You've seen a lot of those figures. A lot of those figures are very, very blurry, by the way. This is not the tip, but please make sure you bring a magnifying glass with you for the actual knowledge test. You will be given uh, a paper copy of uh, the, the knowledge test supplement, as it's called. You'll be given a paper copy of that, as well as you'll have the digital displays like you've been practicing with in our ground school. And so many people, they write into our course and go, hey, I can't see this graphic on my screen, and, and, and I get it. I wish we could make the graphics prettier, but those are the official and actual FAA images. On the printed book, it's a little bit better, uh, but you still want to bring a magnifying glass with you just so you can you can see those charts. And again, this again, I, I'm I'm working my way to the to the the big the tip that I want to give you here, but I'm, I'm coming with other good ideas. Bring the magnifying glass. Also, when measuring these figures, keep in mind the figures are not printed to scale. Meaning, if you bring your E6B or your plotter and you lay it on there to measure it like it's a real sectional chart how they've printed and kind of skewed them a little bit in their scaling, your you know, um, plotter or whatever it is, is not configured for such. They actually give you a little scale in the bottom, usually right-hand corner of the figure. What I've done in the past is I've taken uh, a piece of the scratch paper they gave me, made a scale, and the scale is different, by the way, for each figure, so please keep that in mind. I made the uh, the scale there and then used that little scrap piece of paper to work like a, like a plotter would to actually end up measuring any distances that I needed measured during that time. So you can do that, but anyways. Here's what I really wanted to tell you if you're getting ready for the written test, properly called the knowledge test. It's legend number one. Legend number one is so often forgotten in there. In fact, I don't know of any questions in the private pilot database that actually quote to pull legend one. They normally just say figure 23, figure 24, what I think it's figure 22, the one the, you seen the Dallas Fort Worth one? My goodness, it is a, that is some complex airspace, especially to give you on a private pilot check ride to, to look through that sectional chart, that excerpt of it there. Reference legend one. In fact, go back and you can actually download just same place you got from the FAA's website, same place you got the chart user's guide. It's all free. Go type in private pilot knowledge test supplement, and it's the same for private, remote pilot, etc. And you can find that in there. Most people scroll ahead to the figures. Scroll to legend one. Legend one is a key. Legend one is literally kind of like a light version of the chart user's guide you're going to be downloading or perhaps have downloaded in the past. It's the, hey, when you see a blue dashed line around an airport, that's our class Delta airspace. A solid blue line is our class Bravo airspace. These blue hash marks, that's restricted airspace. Literally, it, is, it, it helps make the sectional part of the knowledge test more of an open book test. And that will be included in your knowledge test solid. Little known fact, so how many of you here, maybe listen to this, maybe you're working on instrument. I know many of you are working on instrument or commercial and go back and listen to the Private Pilot Podcast even and I congratulate you for that because a good pilot's always learned and maybe you just learned something. Maybe you learned, hey, I've been taking these knowledge tests all this time and never knew there was an open book uh, component to that. And so often we, um, we miss that. Legend one is where I want you to spend some time at. So you have a little bit of homework that I want you to work on. I want you to go download the FAA charts user guide. I then want you to download also the knowledge test supplement as it's called. Download the knowledge test supplement. Then from there, I want you to find and look at legend one. Legend one will be included in what you, uh, what you already have, uh, uh, what they're going to give you as well. And again, on the knowledge test, this is beyond the scope of the podcast, but they're gonna give you pencil, they're gonna give you paper. You can't bring things like your phone with you. They're gonna make you leave all that stuff behind. Uh, mine actually has a little locker where you locked it in is where we had to do all our stuff, kind of like a, a bag that we locked in. It stayed with us, but it was locked so we couldn't access it because they are so serious about uh, the possibility of cheating there. It is a proctored test, like um, if you've taken the SATs, the ASVAB, um, ACTs, tests like that, literally someone watches you 
take the test. They issue you the pencils. They issue you the paper. They issue you the test, albeit this time on a computer. Sectional charts can be challenging. I don't expect you to be an expert at sectional charts. I do, however, expect you to be an, an expert at your sectional chart. If you live in North Florida, you should be a pro at the Jacksonville section chart. If it's South Florida, the Miami sectional chart. If you live in Orlando or something, you better be good at both because you're kind of somewhere in between, right? Um, wherever you live geographically, you need to become a master of your sectional chart. There should be nothing on there that's a surprise to you. In fact, you should even be able to go as far as go, yes, this is the prohibited area uh, north of Jacksonville because there, that's Kings Bay and there is a, a submarine base, nuclear sub base there. And that's why they have that. Or, or whatever it is, you need to be able to literally even name it in that grade of detail so you know and understand why that's prohibited airspace, why it's restricted airspace. Oh, it's a military bombing range. That's a train. That's how familiar and intimate I want you to get with your local airspace so you know it and understand it. Listen, M Zuri Nation, you all are just such a blessing to us. Thank you so much uh, just for what you do. If there is anything we can do this week, this month, this year to help you uh, as you work towards maybe it's currency, maybe it's proficiency, maybe you're busy pursuing mastery. We're here to help in all of those departments. Do check out m0atrial.com if you wanna check out a free trial of the online ground school. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. I wrote the private pilot blueprint with the intention of if I could do my flight training over, what I wish someone would have told me. And I want that book to be yours for free. All I ask is that you pay shipping. Visit privatepilotblueprint.com to get your free copy.